Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We are thankful to God for allowing us this opportunity to come to another noonday service. I want y'all to invite your friends in. We're live, amen, invite your friends in. Come on in the room, come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor, and he wrote out all our scriptures. Amen. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. We are thankful for another noonday service. God is wonderful. He's awesome. He's mighty. He's powerful. We are thankful to God for all that God continues to do in our lives. Come on in the room. Amen. Come on. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Invite your loved ones, invite your enemies, amen, <laughs> that people might come and get a word from the Lord. We are thankful for another noonday worship experience, amen. And so I'm going to go and get us started with this old hymn, hymn of the church, 493, like y'all got your hymn books at home, 493, down, I'm sorry, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. My Lord, oh, I promised him that I oh, would serve him till I die. Oh, I'm on the battlefield. For my Lord, this the verse says, I was alone and idle, and I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven, yeah, saying there is work to do. And I took my master's hand, and I joined the Christian band. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. My Lord, oh, I promise him that I am. Yeah, I will serve him till I die. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Here's verse two, verse two, y'all. Oh, I left my friends and kindred, yeah, bound for the promised land, yeah. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. In distant lands I trod me, all in sinner come to God. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. My Lord, yeah, and I promise him that I, uh -huh, I will serve him till I die. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Here's the last verse, last verse, here it is. Oh, now when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit. And he owned me as a child All around the throne of grace He appoints my soul a place And I'm on the battlefield For my Lord Oh yes, I'm on the battlefield For my Lord Yes, I'm on the battlefield feel for my Lord, my Lord, ooh, I promise him that I, yeah, I promise him that I, oh, I promise him that I, yeah, I promise 
him that I, ooh, promise him that I, yeah, I made a promise that I would go all the way. I promise him that I, oh, I will serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I got caught up, y'all. Y'all excuse me. I promised him that I promised him. I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray, amen. Come on, Jones, get it together, amen. I done got caught up, amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come this afternoon thanking you for this opportunity. Thank you, God, for allowing us this chance, this time, this space, this place to begin to lift up your holy and righteous name and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us this space to come together, to be encouraged by way of song and scripture and the word that shall be preached. I pray, Lord God, that this message, what we plan to do here today, will be a blessing to somebody's life, Lord God, and encouragement to let someone know that, Lord, you're still on our side. Bless us now and keep us, continue to surround us, Lord, and may this feeble attempt, Lord Jesus, of this worship experience for just a few minutes be a blessing, Lord, that those who will be hearers, but not only hearers, but doers of your word as well. God, we continue to pray for those that are bereaved among us, those that are experiencing loss. Lord God, continue to throw your arms of comfort around them and build them up in this time. Lord, we thank you in advance. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Look at it. I done worked up a sweat already. Lord, I ain't started preaching yet. Amen. All right. Our scripture. For today is coming from the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, Matthew's gospel chapter number five, verses 14 through 16. Here's what the word of the Lord says, and I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, Reverend Jay. Ye are the light of the world. Amen. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The word of God, the people of God, thanks be to God. Amen. I can't wait to preach this to y'all. Uh, but just for now, I want to give some brief announcements, brief announcements one, I want to remind all of First Baptist that we will have, beginning this Saturday, our communion grab and go. So on June 6th, from 10 to 12 noon, communion grab and go will take place. Just come by the church and you'll be able to come and get your touchless, amen, touchless communion kits already sealed in the baggie. Nobody's touched them, amen, already put in. People have gloves on, everything is safe. Why don't you just drive by, drive through. We will also be giving away care packages. So if there is a need that you have, if you need some specifics, we have non-perishable food items available for you this coming Saturday, June 6th. And we're gonna do it again on next Saturday, June 13th from 10 to 12 noon at the church. So come on by, communion, grab and go. Second Sunday is communion. We're giving it away on this coming Saturday and the following Saturday, the 6th and the 13th. Also wanna remind you all that in cooperation with the YMCA, local YMCA, and, and our regional area of churches, uh, we are also giving away food. Uh, food is being given away. Uh, at the Ridgely Run Community Center at 8400 Mission Road in Jessup, Maryland. So if you are desirous or in need of food items on Saturday, this coming Saturday, June 6th, the next Saturday, June 13th, and also Saturday, June 20th, those three Saturdays will be food giveaways at the Ridgely Run Community Center 
and it will be from 10 to 12 noon as well. So you can stop through First Baptist and get your communion grab and go, get your care packs. And if you need some more, go on down the road to the Risley Run Community Center and you can get food items there as well. I want to thank all of our partners that continue to work tirelessly uh, with us to help our community, especially in feeding those that are hungry. Uh, we are thankful to God for that. And so again, between the church and between the Ridgely Run Community Center, which is about two miles away from the church, you'll be able to get what you need. So again, uh, in partnership with the YMCA, the Ridgely Run Community Center will be giving away food items, amen, on Saturday, June 6th, Saturday, June 13th, and Saturday, June 20th. And then stop by the church on the 6th and the 13th for our communion grab and go. And if you are desirous of a care package, we have those as well. Amen. Also want us to be in prayer. One of our sainted, sainted deacons has transitioned uh, in the person of Deacon Jenkins Odoms Jr. Uh, he will be uh, lying in state. I call it lying in state uh, within the community at the Howell uh, Funeral Home on this coming Thursday uh, from 12 noon to 8 p.m. Amen. Deacon Odom's got it like that. Amen. 12 noon to 8 p.m. at the Howell Funeral Home. And then a service just for the family will take place on this coming Friday, Friday at 11 a.m. at First Baptist. Again, just the family uh, is allowed to that service on this coming Friday. But if you want to pay your respects to Deacon Odom's, who was a great community leader, uh, he was the president of the Howard County chapter of the NAACP for many years. Uh, he was also president of the Maryland State NAACP. He was the state representative uh, for Maryland uh, in the National Organization of the NAACP. And Deacon Odoms did countless other things in our community. And so we want to send him off real well and right. We pray for his wife, uh, Julia, and all of his children, his daughters, uh, and the grandchildren and the like, those of us in the community who will miss him, please continue to pray for the Odom's family. Amen. This concludes the announcements for the afternoon. I feel like I've been church. The announcements for the afternoon as you would govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. All right. Well, uh, Lord kind of laid this on my heart. I know it is not Christmas time. I know that. I know it's June and not December. But in light of the message that I'm going to preach, I felt that this hymn was appropriate for our time together. Uh, so it's hymn number 514, Jesus, the light of the world. Hark, the herald angels sing, Jesus, the light of the world. Glory to the newborn King, Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Verse 2. Joyful all ye nations rise. Jesus, the light of the world. Join the triumphs of the sky. Jesus, the light of the world, we'll walk in the light, beautiful light, come where the dewdrops summer be shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night, Jesus, the light of the world, verse 4. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, Jesus, the light of the world. Hail the 
Son of Righteousness, Jesus, the light of the world, we'll walk in the light, beautiful light, come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. One more time. We'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen, amen. Thank y'all for singing along with me, amen. I want to give a shout out to my family, amen, who's holding it down in the background, amen. Thank God for them, thank God for you, and we thank God for the word. I'm going to get right to the word, amen. Try not, try not to hold you long. I've been doing pretty good these past Wednesdays, amen. Y'all been tuning back in, so I'm going to try to keep it, amen, uh, kind of uh, on a timely basis. So the scripture again comes from Matthew's gospel Chapter number five, verses 14 through 16. And I think in light of everything that's going on in our world and everything that is happening, the Lord has called me to encourage believers in this moment and in this time to understand that, 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 that we have an obligation, we have a responsibility, we have a job to do in the kingdom and for the kingdom of God. Here's what the word says. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. For just a few minutes, y'all, I want to talk about be the light. Be the light. Tell your neighbor, be the light. Be the light. The forces of light and darkness have been at odds with one another since the beginning. In Genesis, it's always been well documented on the macro scale that light was the first created dominant force by the voice and power of creation of God. And in the multi-universal design of God, God also created light so that it might illuminate and emit, emit certain things. In Genesis 1, 3, and 4, it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God not only made light, but on the first, fourth day, he also made the light sources or producers. In Genesis 1 and 16, it says, and God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. What's interesting in all of this is that God used the light of creation in the cosmos through in the midst of chaos and darkness in order to bring order. And these stationary lights within the celestials above would be producers of light that would govern the function of the world and the universe. But even as we get closer in examining our lives as individuals, God saw a need, y'all, to come into the dark corridors of our souls and bring light in the face of darkness. God was not so much God that he wanted to create order out of chaos in the cosmos, but God was so much God that he wanted to create light within the dark corridors of our spirit, our souls. I should never forget one time, I was going to church early one Sunday morning. It was early, y'all. Tell your neighbor early. 
uh, early one Sunday morning, I went into my sock drawer to pull out some black socks to coordinate with my court coordinate, amen, with my black shoes uh, and my black suit. And, and you know, pastor always trying to look good, amen. Uh, but it wasn't until I came into the light of the pulpit that I noticed that one sock was black, Lord have mercy, and the other sock was blue. Now, nobody really noticed it until I started acting different and trying to cover up what I knew was my own personal blunder. Here's the point. The colors were similar, uh -huh, but not identical. Wow. Lord have mercy. In the darkness, there is the difference between things, but it is unnoticeable because we are in the dark. But light will always bring transparency. Light will always show the discrepancies of what is obvious when the lights are on. Light has a way of exposing what darkness tends to conceal. I'm going to say that again. Light has a way of exposing what darkness tends to conceal. And all that's been happening and everything that's been taking place from this pandemic virus to, to racial tensions in our country. It's all about the exposure that light is now bringing on which darkness has concealed and covered up a lot of things that were going on. In fact, in this world, there's still need for light in dark places. And I know now that everybody's heard about various tragic events that have taken place whether it's by Brianna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, or whether it's by Ahmaud Aubrey who was just jogging in his Georgia neighborhood, or whether it's by George Floyd who uh, was, was had a knee on his neck. There's travesties that are going on in this world, and it lets us know something, believers, that there's a need for light in this world. That there is darkness uh, when there are violators more violators than victims. There is darkness when the psychology of the predator is lifted up more than the identity of those who are being killed by certain individuals. There's darkness in this world when the divide between the have and the have nots continue widening. There's darkness when children who are gifts from God or abused or misused. Beloved, you know what happens in darkness. You stumble around. You can't see where you're going. You're not sure where you are. All because you need the light. That's the condition of this world. It's in darkness. It stumbles around without hope and without God. And sometimes it can be very dangerous to be in a place of darkness. And if you're driving, beloved, if you're driving a car and you're driving down a very winding road, you need your headlights to guide you in order to get where you're trying to go. Especially if you're going 60 or 70 miles an hour like Pastor Jones may drive. But what if the lights go out and you're on this winding road where there is no light? then there comes the confusion of darkness. And where there is darkness, there is then not the path that is lit for us to travel. And so the curviness of the roads and the potholes or unmarked objects begin to be our obstacles. The world is in a very dangerous situation. Being in darkness does not know it is headed straight for hell. But we need people who can illuminate God's light. But you cannot illuminate God's light unless the light of God's countenance is already shining in your life. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Tell somebody, be the light. Be the light. If you ain't got nobody near you, tell yourself, be the light. You and I are the light of the world. Now, I know what you're thinking the world is big, Pastor Jones. It's a big place. Can I effectively be the light that God is calling me to be in the world? And I want to resoundingly let you know, yes, you can be that light. Being the light of the world means we actually carry out the same purpose that Jesus had in coming to the earth. The Gospel of John says that when Jesus was born, John chapter 1 verse 9 
the, 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 uh, the, the, the um, apostle says that the true light that gives light to every man is coming into the world. The true light that's going to give light to every person, every individual is Jesus Christ. That's John 1 and 9. Now, what I love about this in the gospel of John, Jesus even talks about himself as the light. In John 8 and 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will never, hallelujah, walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8 and 12. It says in John 12, 46, John 12, 46, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Oh, that's good news, beloved, that Jesus not only came to give light, but Jesus came so that we might not remain in darkness. But then it says, back up a moment, back up a moment, in John 12, verse 36, it says, put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become, watch it, sons of light. That's what the text says. Jesus came to earth to show all of us, that God loved them enough to demonstrate through his son and prepare us by way of relationship to be the sons and daughters of light in a dark, dark world. That the piercing bright nature of God's countenance might be seen through every believer that walks the face of the earth. Now, now, what's what's got? I gotta gotta tie this together. I can do a little teaching here. Tie this together. Now, that was in John chapter twelve. But then, when you go, here's a little Bible study for y'all that don't go. Amen. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. My wife told me to stop doing that. Amen. Here's a little Bible study for you. Second Corinthians four and six. Second Corinthians four and six says this. Write it down. Read it when you get a chance. Second Corinthians four and six. For God, and go down a little further. Made His light. Shine in our hearts, watch it, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Mm -hmm. That means his light is come to give us knowledge and revelation of who God really is in all of our lives. Mm -hmm. But now that Jesus has ascended into glory and gone back to the Father, he has intentionally left the earth and he has specifically left us to fill the role of bringing light to a world that is so desperately in need of God's knowledge of his love and forgiveness and God's understanding that he wants everybody to be filled to capacity with the light of God. Here it is. Be the light. Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. Notice the text. Keep your Bibles open so you can see and not make anything up. Notice the text. Verse 14 said, never said, you are the light of the church. Well, it's not in there. I looked. The, the, the verse never said that we were called to be the light of the church. No, we're called to be illuminators on a global scale. See, the reach of any church should not be limited to the parameters of the walls that surrounded it. That's why I think that this pandemic has opened things up so much so that we have to move beyond the walls of the church. Because it's not about a building, y'all, but it's about ministry going forth and God's people being blessed. Jesus preaches to us that, that we are the light of the world, which means that ministry starts when the benediction is given. <laughs> the text also says that it would be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Please get this. Uh, a city that cannot be hid. I, back in the day when I used to fly, I, mean, I ain't flown nowhere now, but back in the day when I flew on, a, on an airplane, I would love to fly at night. And in night flying, I would love to look out the window because I either wanted the aisle seat or the window seat. That's just me. I can't take the middle seat. I'm too big of a man. Amen. Hear that. So I'm, I'm, I'm sitting by the window. I lift up the window at night and I love to see the lights that illuminate down below. The lights that illuminate down below. And from the distance, you can see uh, the conglomerate of individual lights all shining at the same time. 
all illuminating in the distance, shining brightly. I'm 30,000 feet in the air, but I can still see the light that is shining on the ground below. What does that tell us? That tells us that when we are the light, when we're trying to be the light, that God wants us to be illuminators. You and I are the light of the world. And then God will, what God will do is when he puts his light in our lives, then God will elevate us to a point where light can be seen from above. Maximum illumination takes place. In the holy city of Jerusalem, there were cities that were, there was a city that were, was built on hilltops, not only so that they could see the enemy approaching, but the city was built on hilltops so that, so that they could see for miles around the light and the city that has been set on a hill. Now, now, given what God has put in us, light, and where God has placed us on a hill, the, the worst thing we can do then is hide the light that God has put into our lives. That, that's the worst thing that we can do. And as a kid, I was curious to know if the light in the refrigerator stayed on when I closed the door. Y'all know y'all did it too. I didn't understand how light worked. Uh, but, but you know what? The thing is when the refrigerator door swung open, that's when the light came on. But when the refrigerator door was closed, then the lights went off. Here's the thing. God did not place you in position to receive his light. And to be an illuminator so that you can hide behind closed doors. No, you and I are supposed to be illuminators. And where we are illuminators, God will then elevate us so that people can see the light of God's countenance in us. Yeah, yeah. Your Christianity is meant to shine. You are lights of the world. And I hope you realize what this means. It means that you're shining your light. Jesus uses the picture and illustration in this, in this message, which is really a part of the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus uses the picture of an oil lamp, which stood on a table or a stand. And today we're using the imagery of street lights. See, Christians and church should shine like street lights so that those that come by the light might receive illumination of who God is in our lives. Do people light a lamp and put it under a bushel? That's the question in the text. Of course not. The purpose of a lamp is to shine. A lamp under a bushel is hid and then light is wasted. In, in the Gospel of Mark it says that the lamp should not be put under a bed. In the Gospel of Luke it speaks about putting a lamp in a cellar or in a closet or in a corner. And, and, and again, the results are the same. If the lamp is hidden, then the light can't be shown. And if the lamp is only good for being used in covered places, then it has the least amount of effect. You and I are called to be the light of the world. Think about this. Think about this, beloved. If the light does not shine, it is not because of darkness. I'm going to say that again. If the light does not shine, it's not because of darkness. Darkness cannot put out light. Oh, I'm about to shout in my own house. Amen. Darkness cannot put out light. Even if darkness increases and it's pitch black. It's not enough darkness in this earth to ever put out the light. Because there's enough light that even the, the smallest minute light can never be smothered by darkness. See that no, Light cannot be smothered by darkness. Light begins increasingly to grow and to move away the darkness. See, darkness gets darker only because light fails. Darkness gets darker only because we put a lamp under a bushel or in a closet or in the basement. Our lamp is not shining before men if we keep ourselves isolated and hidden away from the world. Christianity is something which is meant to be seen, meant to be demonstrated, meant to be understood. And so, beloved, Christianity is something that's meant to be seen. It has been said that there can be no such thing. As a secret discipleship. 
because a secret discipleship destroys itself. In other words, a secret discipleship is someone that's claiming to be a Christian, but they only become Christians in certain places. And God says, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I need you to be the light in every place that you go. Discipleship should destroy secrecy. Um, a person's Christianity should be perfectly visible to everyone that knows him, them. Everybody should know that you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Everybody should know that you love the Lord and he heard your cry and pitied every groan. Everybody should know during this pandemic, I stand on my Christian beliefs and my Christian principles. Everybody in your neighborhood, even though you in your house, should understand and know that Jesus Christ is the light of your life. Now notice with me, I got to move on. Verse 15 says, it can't be hidden under a bushel, but then it is put on a candlestick. It gives light unto all that are in the house. Now watch this. Jesus shifts the scene from lighting the world to lighting the house. We, we move from being invisible on a hillside yeah. to being put on a candlestick. On. Understand this. Our aim in being a Christian is to change the world and help them to see the light of Jesus but the way we change the world to help them see the light of Jesus is by what we consistently do as believers in our homes. The way you help to change the world to see the light of Jesus is by the consistency of what you do within your own homes. So that one neighborhood at a time, change can come. One city at a time, change can come. One county at a time, change can come. One region at a time, change can come. One state at a time, change can come. One nation at a time, change will come. And the aim is the overarching position, but the objective is the specifics on our part to make sure that we are shining the light. Benjamin Franklin, to convince the people of Philadelphia of the advantages of street lights, uh, decided to show his neighbors by placing in front of his home uh, a street lamp and lantern. So he had purchased an attractive lantern, polished the glass, and placed it on an extended pole in front of his house. And each evening he would light the wick and hang the lantern on the lamp post outside of his house. Before long, all of his neighbors noticed the light that was coming and emanating from Benjamin Franklin's house. And, and even those far up the street noticed the warm glow around Franklin's house. The people passing by the house were delighted because it made walking in the dark that much easier. Soon thereafter, other places began to put lanterns in front of their homes and eventually the city recognized the need for having well-lit streets in the city of Philadelphia. A true story. It starts with one light. It starts with one light being illuminated in your community and in your place. And what you do, what you're supposed to do, then God will allow that light to catch on to somebody else and then somebody else will catch on to the light and before long the whole area is illuminated yeah. but verse 16 tells us how to shine please don't miss this how to shine text says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works yeah. now I want you to know beloved that there's a difference between letting your light so shine and shining your own light <laughs> letting your light so shine and shining your light. Too many people don't know the difference between letting your light so shine and shining your light. I got to because the difference is easy. Either one leads back to self or either the other leads back to the Savior. If you want and like to be seen, then all you're doing is shining your own light. I know I'm going to get no hearts on this. Amen. If you're wanting to get the credit, 
All you're doing is shining your own light. If, if you just want to be out front flossing and stunting, amen, I think my young people still use that word, flossing and stunting on them. Let me stunt on them a little bit, amen. If that's all you want to do, then all you're doing is shining your own light. You're shining your light. But the text says that your good works, which ultimately leads to glorifying God, is what is visible when you shine your light. In other words, the good works that I do is meant to go back and give glory and credit to Almighty God. The good works are meant to just let folks know that it ain't about me, but it's all about Jesus. It's all about what he did for me. It's all about how he blessed my life. And I'm just letting you know through the works that I'm doing about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And is there anybody on this feed that can testify that God has been good to you, that God has allowed you to be in the place and position where you are? Is there anybody can give some hearts and clap some hands and give God praise for the fact that the light of God is shining in your life and nobody can take that away from you because God is using you right now to illuminate his glory. Glory in all of your lives. Here it is. I'm almost done. Light illuminates in darkness. I see y'all. I see you. I see you. Light illuminates in darkness. Light elevates our consciousness. Light penetrates our souls. We must also remember that light makes a difference in darkness only because our good works is a reflection of his goodwill. We need to be sure we properly understand this. Jesus never told us that we are the light source. We are not the source of the light. Jesus never said we are the sun, that we are the moon, we are the stars, or or, or, or the lamp. He, he, he never said that. He, he never said that we are the sun or the stars or the lamp. I, I say this because uh, it is Jesus who is the source. It is Jesus who is the sun. It is Jesus who is the light. Listen to these words in John chapter 8 verse 12. I am the light of the world and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of of life. All we are are human reflectors of the light of God's own countenance. So when Jesus says you are the light of the world, you know what we are. We are re light reflectors. We reflect Christ's light in the same way as a jewel or a prism reflects the light of the sun. So what we must do then is let the light of Jesus shine through us so that people might see the light of God's glory shining in our lives. The light is in us, but it's only in us to come through us that others may see the glory of God. And beloved, in the dark times that we're living in, in the times of tribulation and trouble that we're experiencing, there is a need for us to shine God's light, to let God's light come through us so that the light of God can be seen. We are to be a prism more so, more so than a jewel. Uh, a prism reflects light. A jewel, what a true jewel does is it traps light. So then it takes the light in and what you discover is the brilliance, let's say, of a diamond that shines and the brilliance sparkles based upon the light. But the reality is it's because of the light that goes into the jewel. But the one thing about a prism is a prism receives light only to receive the same amount of light out, to give the same amount of light out. God wants us to take his light receive it, and then send that light forward to be a blessing to somebody else. And all during these protests, and all during the time of peaceful protests, I want to I want to really lift that up, peaceful protests. People have been shining their light in dark places. Yeah. 
People have been standing for justice in the midst of injustice. People have been standing because and shining their lights. Notice this. People have been doing it during the day and they've been doing it during the night. Now, you've got a few people, a few distractors that want to try to ruffle things up, shake things up to the place where they cause disturbances. But they are in the minority. The majority of people that come at night and protest peacefully is to shine a light on an injustice that continues to plague this world. To continue to do things in this world that, 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 that's, that we thought was over, that was back in the 1960s, but it's happening today. But let's what God needs us to continue to be the light. I'm, 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 I'm almost done. There's a story about a young boy, about nine years old, who went with his parents on a European vacation. And then during this European vacation, they began to tour visiting very specific sites, great old cathedrals of the past. The young boy was enamored by the fact that these buildings were so massive and tall. But the thing about it is once he went into these great cathedrals, he saw these beautiful stained glass windows. Stained glass windows of various saints and various patriarchs of the church. He was so impressed that he stood and gaze at these empty halls looking through the beautiful stained glass windows in wonderment. Upon returning home, he told his Sunday school teacher about the great churches of Europe and the glass portraits of the saints. And his Sunday school teacher asked the young nine-year-old boy, what then is a saint to you? And his mind went back to those massive, beautiful stained glass windows and he said, a saint is a person that light shines through. In other words, because he was able to see the beauty of the stained glass windows based upon the sunlight that shone through the stained glass, his understanding was that a saint is a person that allows the light to shine through. Beloved, that's what we have to be. We have to be the ones that allow the light of God's countenance to shine through us. We have to be the reflection of God's light. But finally, to glorify God and to give God praise is of essence. Even in a world filled with darkness, we can give praise for light of his salvation. Even in a world that's dealing with an, a pandemic and the epidemic of, of, of our nation going through systems and, and, and structures that have now need to come down and be defeated, we can still give God praise. You see, I can praise God because lives will be changed. I can praise God because things around me won't remain the same. I can praise God because I understand that God wants his light to shine in my life. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know about y'all this afternoon. I, I feel pretty good now. Yeah, yeah. But I thank God that he gave me an opportunity to begin to tell the old, old story. Yeah. I thank God that I have an opportunity to share with the beloved online that God has given us the light so that we can shine the light. And we're not supposed to hold on to that light, but we're supposed to let go of that light and shine all over the world. Shine all around us by day and by night because Jesus is the light of the world. I don't need a Hammond organ, y'all, to get happy. Jesus is the light of the world. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I just want to give God glory, give God praise. Tell him thank you for how you bless me, oh Lord. And thank you for how you bless my life and my family's life. So let your light so shine among me men and women that they may see your good works and glorify God which is in heaven. Is
Is there anybody out there today that can give God glory to, even in the midst of a pandemic? Is there anybody out there that can give God glory in the midst of troubles and trials and darkness all over the world? Jesus said, I have already overcome the world. And because he overcame, I can now go forth being the light that God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm a reflector of your light, God. Thank you, Jesus. A light that touched my life a long time ago. Hallelujah. Now in the midst of what we're going through, we need to shine that light. Hallelujah. Shine that light. Thank you, Jesus. Deacon Booker, Jerusalem Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia, used to sing this song. Shine on me. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Shine on me. Let the light. Thank you, God. From the lighthouse shine on me. Sometimes you got to take it back to your roots. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Thank you, God. God, I done messed around and got happy in my own house. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Listen, listen, listen. I'm almost done. I, I got two minutes here. Listen, I want somebody to know you're not by yourself. God has put too much light on the inside of you that you hide that light. You got to allow that light to shine forth in dark times and in dark places and even among dark people. And I'm not talking about black people, amen. I'm talking about darkness being the place where people don't know God. We got to shine God's light. I want y'all to be blessed today and encouraged. I hope this message has helped you to understand that we're supposed to be the reflectors of God's light. I want you to have a great Wednesday. Enjoy the joy of Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now to the conclusion of this noonday service. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for the sermon and the songs that have been sang from Zion. And thank you for those who have tuned in, Lord God, to get encouragement during these difficult times. I pray, Lord God, that your light would continue to shine. Let us not hide the light. Let's not hide it under a bushel, but let it be on a lampstand. Let it be on a candlestick. Let's light up our homes so that we can light up our communities and light up the world. God, we love you, adore you, and we bless you, and we thank you, God, for who you are. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and ask it all. Amen, and thank God. God bless you, beloved. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next Wednesday, y'all be blessed. Amen.